Good evening, Chairwoman Kowalski, board members, Dr. Jones, GPS staff, and community members. Thank you for providing this opportunity to share and update you on the progress of our special education students. This presentation is going to cover the GPS eligibility trends and staffing, progress of our students using state measures, reviewing progress of students in our programs such as co-teaching and reading lab, and an update on the recommendations of the Special Education Advisory Committee made last spring. Since October 1st, 2021, GPS has seen a net growth of 177 students identified as requiring an IEP. Our eligibility rate as of October 1st, 2023 is 15.9%, up from 14.3%. The official Connecticut prevalence rate for 2022 was 16.7% and projected to be just over 17% for October of 2023. The most recent data for special education as of February 2nd, 2024 is now at 15.91% which has trended up over the past 10 years from 10.39%. The overall population growth in special education has been 49% over the past 10 years, which equates to 449 students. In 2021-22, GPS updated caseload guidelines. These guidelines are set looking at caseloads in March, April, knowing that students are identified throughout the school year. Preschool is set at 15 total students, six typical and six students with disabilities. Elementary is 15 students for one teacher. Middle school is 18 for one teacher and high school is 22 per one teacher. There were also program guidelines set for co-teaching as well as our special education class programs for students following the Connecticut alternative standards, including community connections. The High School Educational Wellness Center is in reference to the number of special education students who are receiving their core instruction from a special education teacher in the center and have one of the three teachers as their case manager. With a net growth of 177 students since October of 2021, the SESS department has been monitoring caseloads at schools to ensure that special education teachers are able to provide services to their students. Each year, we look at projections and make staffing recommendations based on current number of students, needs of students, and historic numbers of initial eligibilities to assign staff. The SES department monitors these caseloads throughout the year and will add staff as needed if caseloads start to reach and surpass established guidelines. For example, a teacher was added to the Old Greenwich and Glenville at the beginning of this school year, and we are in process of adding a 0.5 teacher to Riverside Elementary. If you look to the column in the far right, you will see that our current caseloads are within the guidelines. The left-hand column has the case numbers at the time the PCG study was conducted. Since that time, we have worked to keep the numbers low in light with the recommendations from the study. Our middle school caseload guidelines are one teacher per 18 students. Currently, all schools fall within these guidelines. Each of the middle schools has a supported resource which specifically supports students with intensive social-emotional behavioral needs. While all schools have students who follow the Connecticut Alternative Standards, Western Middle School has a cohort of students in which it requires staff to be specifically allocated. While there is some increase in caseloads from 2021, programming for our supported resource and co-teaching do offset the direct service hours for the case managers. Starting in 2022-23, all of the five houses at GHS were provided three full-time special education teachers to decrease caseloads. In addition to those 15 teachers, there are 2.7 teachers in the Wellness Center, three teachers for our special classes, and one teacher for Community Connections. Every year, the state of Connecticut looks at specific data points for special education. Those indicators include initial referral timelines, time with non-disabled peers, and disproportionality. In addition, we look at the smarter balanced assessment specifically for students with disabilities to monitor progress. Every year, the state monitors the district performance on initial el eligibility and time with non-disabled peers. When a student is referred for special education, the district has 45 days from the date of referral to the implementation of the IEP. The state monitors this to ensure that students are provided services in an expedient manner. In the 2020-2021 school year, GPS completed the referral process within a time frame 71% of the time. 
in the 22-23 school year, the district increased to 96.7% accuracy. Time with non-disabled peers is an important measuring point as well. As you can see, we have been increasing our time with non-disabled peers as a district. The state guidelines looks to see 80% of all students with disabilities within the district spending at least 79.1 to 100% of their day with their non-disabled peers. We have been increasing and are very close to that expectation. Another area that the state monitors is disproportionality. Disproportionality looks at if the district has an equitable representation of students who qualify for special education by category across race and ethnicity. The state identifies a district as being significantly disproportionate if any category of special education is above a three in the relative risk ratio for three or more years. In the spring of 2022, GPS was identified as being significantly disproportionate. We were first identified in the 2019 school year as being disproportionate. Thanks to the work of our staff and putting processes in place to determine eligibility across the district, GPS is no longer seen as a disproportionate by the state. The district was able to decrease disproportionality in the areas of autism, learning disability, emotional disability, and speech and language. Looking at the Smarter Balanced Assessment, this chart shows the percentage of students with disabilities who score proficient or better. If you look at the far left column against the right column with the state data, you can see the growth within GPS is substantially higher than that of the state average. Again, as with math, you can see the growth within GPS is substantially higher than that of the state average. The district has been providing specialized training to staff members to address the areas of decoding, reading, comprehension, and writing using research-based interventions such as visualizing and verbalizing, Wilson, and writing revolution. During the past two years, GPS started the co-teaching model at Cost Cobb, Western Middle School, and GHS in addition to ongoing support at Central and Eastern Middle Schools. The district has also added a reading lab teacher to support our critical reading needs students. This year, the preschools implementing the Board of Education approved creative curriculum. The district utilizes the Brigance Inventory of Child Development to pinpoint understanding in the domains tied to early development. The following data represents early childhood outcomes measures in the inventory. These three areas are the acquisition and use of skills and knowledge, which measures thinking, reasoning, remembering, problem solving, number concepts, counting, and understanding the physical and social words. It also includes a variety of skills related to language and literacy, including vocabulary, phonemic awareness, and letter recognition. Action to meet needs, AMN, which looks at behaviors like taking care of basic needs, getting from place to place, using tools such as a fork, toothbrush, or crayons, and in older children contributing to their own health, safety, and well-being. It also includes integrating motor skills to complete tasks, taking care of oneself in areas like dressing, feeding, grooming, and toileting, and acting on the world in socially appropriate ways to get what one wants. And finally, positive social-emotional skills, which looks at concepts and behaviors such as expressing emotions and feelings, learning rules and expectations in social situations, and social interactions and social play. Special education students are given this inventory when they enter the pre-K program and upon leaving for kindergarten, giving us the information needed to look at kindergarten readiness skills. This is the second year of co-teaching at Cost Cobb. In 2022-23, there was both a kindergarten and a first grade class started. For the 2023-24 school year, a second grade class was added, and it is anticipated to add a third grade class in 2024-25 school year. In looking at the math data, you can see that the co-taught class students are performing similarly to the other grade level classes at Cost Cobb, as well as across the district. Eastern Middle School has historically had collaborative or co-taught classes, in which there are two teachers in the classroom, a special education and general education teacher. These classes are grade level courses with grade level materials. Starting in 2022-23, specific training around co-teaching was provided to these co-teaching teams. Overall, the data shows that students in co-taught are doing roughly the same as students in the non-co-taught classrooms. This slide shows the same data for math. We do see a positive increase in grades 6 and 7. 
Similar to Eastern, Central Middle School has had collaborative or co-taught classes. The work this year has been on curriculum development to support students who require modified work in the general education classroom, but are accessing the core curriculum. The Central team, along with the Inclusion Specialist, are working on adapting curriculum in English, math, social studies, and science. The team is utilizing AI and some exciting work in how to make these modifications. We see similar data in math as we did for English. We do see a positive increase in grades 6 and 8, while grade 7 has remained relatively flat. The 2022-23 school year was the first year of co-teaching at Western Middle School and focused on the 8th grade. The co-taught math class focused on moving students out of the skills class and into grade level classes. Support was provided in both the math and ELA co-teaching teams throughout the school year with the inclusion specialist. As stated earlier, 2022-23 was the first year of co-teaching at Western. You can see the slight increase in quarter one data as we begin the second year. The first full year of co-teaching implementation at Greenwich High School was in 22-23. This slide shows the semester grades in the 11 courses that were co-taught compared to non-co-taught or traditional courses. You can see that overall the co-teaching courses, specifically in math, provide support to our students in accessing the course content and provide a positive outcome for all students in the course. This slide is looking at the first quarter grades of this school year and shows again the overall trend in supporting our students with disabilities in the co-taught class, which allows students to access on-level classes with positive outcomes for all students. The Reading Lab teacher provides both direct services to students as well as intensive consultation support to special education teachers for specific students in order to ensure that they are receiving systematic, explicit, direct instruction in the area of phonics, phonemic awareness, fluency, vocabulary, spelling, and comprehension using a structured literacy approach. Our Reading Lab teacher currently has a caseload of 14 students from across elementary, middle, and high school. She has worked with, and after seeing substantial progress in closing the gap, been able to transition three students back to their regular special education teacher. Last spring, the Special Education Advisory Council submitted their annual report to the Board of Education. These recommendations are reviewed by the SES Department. As SEAC, PTAC, and SES Department meet regularly, many of these recommendations had begun prior to the release of the report. The Behavior Prevention and Intervention Committee had several recommendations around trauma-informed care. In the 2022-23 school year, the high school special education teachers participated in trauma-informed care training. This school year, the social workers and school counselors are participating in the training. In addition, school leaders on the Safe School Climate Committee are also participating in training as well, focused on supporting the work being done in the buildings. Training of paraprofessionals has been a priority. At the elementary level, all paraeducators started participating in the NYU Pine training modules in 22-23 that include work with students who are not neurodiverse and how to support students with executive functioning needs. Our secondary paras are participating in trainings that align with the Council for Exceptional Children's Professional Standards for Paraeducators. The Consistency Committee looked at areas that show differences between schools. The SESS department maintains a list of all staff who are trained in various professional developments. This allows for the department to be proactive to ensure that new staff receive the same training as other staff across the district to ensure that all staff have training in specific areas. SEAG had concerns about the transition from level to level, for example, from preschool to elementary, elementary to middle, and middle to high school, and the change in services due to the location. This year, the bridging process has been updated to support a more collaboration between schools to ensure a continuity of services when students bridge or move from one level to the next. Since 2021, a monthly SESS newsletter goes out to all staff, and those newsletters are maintained in order to provide consistent information and updates to all staff across the district. I meet at our buildings with building administrators monthly to go over the newsletter, and the SES coordinators meet monthly with the building SES staff to review these newsletters and answer any questions. I want to thank the Board of Education for all their support, as well as the community and staff for their dedication and support of our students. Thank you.